Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Posted Up with Chris Haynes podcast here on Yahoo Sports Holiday Edition. I want to say uh, happy holidays to everybody in advance. Happy Thanksgiving. As we record this pod right in here, this is what Tuesday, so two days before Thanksgiving, before you guys get the chow down. And so this is, this will be a little primer for you guys. You can listen to this episode uh, while you you know while you got some turkey. This can be a family a family um type of event for you guys so um i hope you enjoy this pot right here man this this brother right here is has been he's been killing it he's been killing it man on both ends of the floor second year player first round pick of the memphis grizzlies desmond bang man look first of all brother i, I want to tell you so the, i'm gonna tell you the first person the first player that mentioned you to me I, i've known about you but the first player that mentioned you to me was like this dude is tough Damian Lillard, he, I guess he played you guys not too long, maybe a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But he was like, he was like that, bro. <laughs> he said that, bro. <laughs> he said he tough, man. <laughs> he said he tough. <laughs> he said that, bro, strong right there. But you, you've been, you've been catching a lot of attention this year, man. Just, just the work you put in. And I mean, you, you, you didn't catch anybody sleeping last year. You did your thing last year, but you have a more expanded role this year. Can you just talk about just the preparation that went in? to to put in the production that you're doing right now? Yeah, I mean, it's really just, you know, daily habits. Um, you know, uh, one, of, one of our motivational speakers we had at TCU when I was there um, during my time there I always talked about just habit stacking. Um, you know, once you, you know, stack these habits on top of each other, um, you know, you'll look up down the road and you'll be like, damn, I done covered a lot of ground. You know, I done got a lot better um, in, in whatever areas you, you know, been stacking them habits in. And, uh, you know, that's that's just been something that's kind of went with me for these last three, four years. Started really my junior year at TCU when I really started locking into the grind, um, you know, both on and off the court. And, you know, it's, it's starting to pay off. There's it's only been two players to come out of TCU that have been drafted in the first round. Yourself last year, you were last pick of the first round. I kind of want to get more into that, but you were last pick of the first round last year. And then um, Kurt Thomas, who I covered in Portland when I was covering the Blazers back in the day, my first year covering the league. Actually, Kurt Thomas was on that team. So he he's a funny dude. I don't know if you had time to ever chat with him. But uh, that's, you know, two, two, the only two to come out of TCU. What I want to ask is that, did you think the NBA was a possibility? You know, you weren't you weren't highly recruited coming out of high school. When did this become like a, a realization that this could happen? Yeah, I mean, so going into my college career, I was just looking at it like, you know, I'm happy to be here. You know, like I, I'm coming from a, a town of 30,000 people. I graduate in class of 20 kids, you know, so playing in the Big 12 is like a dream come true for me at that, you know. So whatever that road looked like. Um, you know, whether it's my junior year I'm playing, my sophomore year I'm starting to get playing time. And, you know, I got a lot of playing time as a freshman. And uh, after the season, um, I got invited to go to the USA Under-19s camp. And, uh, you know, I performed well. A lot of those guys went on to get drafted the following year. And I was like, I mean, if this is the crop of guys that's, you know, the next stars, and, I mean, there were lottery picks and all that there. I mean, I if, if those are the guys that – um, you know, I'm gonna have to be able to go up against every day and compete against. I think that I got a, a chance, you know, my, my college coach told me the same thing and kind of put that bug in my ear. So that would have been after my freshman year. And then after my sophomore year, we had a good year, went to the tournament. Um, I think I had the highest three point percentage in the country and I wanted to come out. Like I wanted to test the waters and see what was up. And he was like, nah, you need to come back to school, whatever. Um, so long story short, I ended up playing my four years there, but, um, you know, I'm extremely thankful, uh, for the way everything worked out for sure. Who were some of those players on, on that team that was under the under 19 team? Uh, it was like Kevin Knox, um, Diallo, PJ Washington, Carson Edwards, uh, Josh Kogi. I mean, pretty much all first round picks. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, and so I want to ask you about this, the process of coming out. You chose to come back and, you know, play your senior year at TCU. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's, you, you know, there's always, there was always a stigma about seniors. You know, how high can a, a senior be taken? And and it was good to see in this past draft, there was a few seniors taken yeah. in the first round. But what, 
when you made that decision to come back as a senior, was that something that was in your mind? Is that, well, maybe scouts or NBA executives will hold that against me? No question. I mean, I knew that, you know, given my age and given my wingspan, that was two things that was going to be working against me from the jump. But, um, you know, I've always been the kid that just needed an opportunity. You know, just give me an opportunity and I'm going to figure it out and, you know, find my way. Um, you know, so whether it would have been a two-way contract drafted in the late second round, I mean, because that's what, you know, realistically I thought was going to happen, um, you know, prior to the pre-draft process and stuff. And I started climbing the boards and my name started gaining steam. But, um, you know, before I didn't I didn't know what to expect. And, and all I was hoping for was an opportunity. So, so before you got drafted, I mean, before the workouts and everything, yeah. you said you were thinking initially what? What was that again? Late second it's, round. I mean, my age, you know, we going into our interviews and he's like, man, we got to tell these guys you're, you're a late first round, early second round pick, you know, to try to pick up some steam, kind of build that narrative because we was, you know, we was thinking 45 to 60, mm. 40 to 60, somewhere in there. Wow. That, that's, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. So, okay. First round. So when you got, so tip, take me through the moments leading up to you getting selected at the, at thirty. Did yeah. you know? Did you know a few selections that you might be going at that slot? Like, what was it a surprise? Like, what check me through that? Yeah, I mean, I thought we was going sixteen to Detroit. I mean, is my that agent, right? My agent had got the call um, right after Aaron Neesmith went off the board at fourteen, and. Uh, they was like, sit tight. We're trying to make it happen. So we were like, okay, they got 16. And then I didn't go at 16. And uh, we saw that they had just traded for the 19th pick. So we were like, oh, we're, we're going here. And they took Sadiq Bay at 19. And then uh, we knew Philly had liked us at 21. But they took Maxi, of course. And, um, I mean, after that, all the, the picks started scrambling around and the teams that originally had the picks didn't, you know, have those picks anymore after everybody traded around and moved around and stuff. So I started getting kind of nervous, but I did have a good interview with Memphis. I talked to him in mm -hmm. April, though, and you know the pre-draft process, yep. long process. Draft wasn't until November. Didn't hear from him again until draft night. You know, I knew they liked me, but, um, you know, I think they were trying to keep everything close to the vest since they was trying to trade up to get me. Yeah, so Boston drafted you, but Boston traded the pick to, to yeah. Memphis, just for yeah. clarification for those out there. Uh, you mentioned one thing that people were kind of, I guess, hesitant to try to anoint you first-round status was because you mentioned it, your, your wingspan. Yeah. And, you know, you're a compact guy. You're, 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 you're a big guy. So yeah. did you even, like, knowing that going in, you know, some people, some players, they'll go in, like some players when they're going and doing workouts, they may not work out and they may just go do their measurements. Some would just do measurements, but they don't work out. Yeah. Did you, knowing like the wingspan was going to be an issue, was there any point of view even, you know, giving teams measurements or is that something you felt you had to do? Obligated no, to do? I did. We didn't even do it. Like we didn't, didn't, even, do I, it. We didn't <laughs> even do it. Cause we, we knew, you know, we knew the teams already knew the arm short, you know, yeah. so we <laughs> We didn't want to go up there and they'd be shorter than we thought. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Going crazy. So we just, you know, let it ride out. <laughs> <laughs> no, then, then, you 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 a compact guy, man. You want yeah. you want to slow like if they if they add if they add a, another event to All Star Weekend, I like them to add the bench press because I want to see what you what you lifted out there, man. But what 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 are you lifting right now? What what's your max right now? The bench, this man, it's crazy. So once I got to the league, bro, all we do is lift legs all the time. I mean, we do up the body here once in a while, but back in college, I was like three sixty. Are you serious? The, yeah, I was. I was. We was moving some weight. We were moving some weight for sure. Now, obviously, like if people look at your game, look at this guy. Like for people that aren't familiar, go check this guy out. Check out it. Check out the highlights and everything. You're not just, you know, shooting jumpers. You know, you're doing that. But I saw that athletic finish against Utah the other day. We went to the hole. You know what I mean? Like so. <laughs> There's always a knock on players who like get too bulk or too yoke that you're not able to to be as loose, whatever. Like yeah. what what tell me from your experiences, what is it like being built like you and being able to go out there and play? 
Man, people always joking around saying that they ain't never seen nobody built like me that can shoot the ball like me. Like they say, I, you know, I need to be playing NFL football. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's just how I've always been. Like, I've always been like a stocky, strong kid. You know, I grew up in Indiana, all that corn fed. Grandma feed me cornbread. Sure. And, you know what I'm saying? The beans. You know what I'm mm, saying? So, man. That, that's just uh, how I came up. And I mean, as it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know. If it just is what it is. Did, did anybody, I don't know if whether, whether it was in college or once you did get to the NBA level, did anybody try to convince you to slim down, tone down? Anybody try to get you to change? Not like your body? I wouldn't say tone down. Um, it was more like improved flexibility, you know, because gotcha. I got all this muscle mass and stuff and I move stiff. Like I've gotten better for sure with the way that I move, but, um, you know, just work on my flexibility and range of motion and stuff like that. So, yeah, take me back. You know, you talked about, you know, getting fed, you know, getting fed good, man, back in the day, man. Yeah. You, got a, you got a unique story about your upbringing and being yeah. raised with your, your grandparents. Can you just talk me through a little bit of your upbringing? I guess get it all the way up to the point where, uh, I guess, who you were raised with in high school and college. For sure. So my mom, um, you know, had me when she was 18 years old. Um, just wasn't ready, um, you know, had some stuff going on in her life. Um, you know, she wasn't ready and my dad wasn't in the picture, um, you know, so I started bouncing around from home to home, like with my aunt, with my cousins, you know what I'm saying? And then once I got to about two years old, my great grandparents was like, that's enough. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're going to take them in. And at the time, my grandma was probably about 62 and my grandpa wow. was been about 69. Mm. So, you know, they taking me in and they've already been through the wars. You know what I'm saying? They they got grandkids, great grandkids already. Um, you know, so uh it was it was different, you know, being raised by your great grandparents. It was definitely different, but um, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to have it any other way. Um, you know, my grandma put me in a private school um in fourth grade. I was in public school up until then, put me in a private school, and I hated it, man. They had me tucking my shirt in, <laughs> belt on, you know what I'm saying? But she was, you know, she was stubborn, and she thought that, you know, it was it was was, was best for me, um, you know, and it, and it, looking back on it, it probably was. But, uh, you know, kept me out of trouble, kept me out the streets, um, running around, being crazy. So, uh, yeah. No, yeah. that, that, that's a blessing, man. Grandparents, it's blessing to have your your great grandparents, you know, For alive, sure. man. No, For that's sure. that's 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 incredible, man. You you um your teammates with another guy who was under the radar in college, well, high school, and then he didn't have a lot of traction in college. Do John ja Morant? Do you guys yeah. ever talk about just because both of you guys still play with a chip on your shoulder? Do you guys talk about you know just being overlooked and you know how, how what is that like? course i mean that's 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 why we are who we are um you know that's what got us to this point um you know we ain't never gonna lose sight of that you know we always gonna have that chip on the shoulder you know Ja gonna be all-star this year um you know i'm playing starting level minutes um you know but that doesn't change anything um you know that chip ain't going nowhere defensively you're a beast guys can't you know they they rather i mean you know, i looked at a little, little bit of the film they they don't you know they they ain't gonna try to mix it up with you you know what I mean it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be let me let me get this step on them you know what I mean they don't want to go body and do all that stuff yeah. like do you see that it, like I know players aren't going to admit that on the court but as a player you could tell like this guy is really trying to avoid contact like do you sense yeah. that when you're playing them for sure I mean and the the rules have changed this year um you know so they're letting us be a little more physical um mm. last year you could barely touch guys you know what i'm saying especially the stars um you know they get into the foul line 10 12 14 times a game and uh you know that's just not the case this year so it actually you know works out a little bit better for me and that's something the de de defensive players have been calling for for a while you know they always yeah. felt like offense players get so much freedom get the yeah. benefit of the doubt and for defensive sure. at, at a disadvantage so this year you really feel like it's a, it's a, it's about even. Probably our offensive players still going to sure. get their calls, For but you sure. think it's yeah. yeah. It's a it's an offensive game at the end of the day, but um yeah, I mean those little ticky tack calls and um you know stuff like that out the window for sure. So that so there was I remember um 
David West. I used to cover the Warriors back then. David West, he played his final years with the Warriors. He said, um, the one the, he said the day that I remember that it was time for me to retire. Yeah, he said the moment I remember that moment I knew it was time for me to retire is when he tried to back down. What's the guy plays for New Orleans the Pelicans? Uh, played on the Lakers. Dang. He was traded with Lonzo. His name, I see his face. His name is He's on the Evan. Pelicans right now. He's on the Pelicans right now. He got he was he's part of the trade uh Ingram? for the Lakers. It ain't Ingram, is it? No, not Ingram, the other guy. Third, the third um Josh Hart. Josh Hart. Josh Hart. Thank you. Yeah. Josh Hart. Slipping my mind, man. Yeah. See this face. But he said the moment he he was trying to back this guy down. Josh Hart is like 6'4", 6'5". Yeah, David yeah, West, 6'10". Yeah. And yeah. he said he couldn't budge him. <laughs> he said he couldn't yeah. budge him. He said that's what I do. It was time yeah. to retire. So I yeah. want to ask you on the flip, flip in. Because usually you're the one imposing your will. Guys are trying to avoid... Like going body to body with you, but what what one player, whether that was whether that was your rookie year or or today, what's the one player where like they put a body on you and you buzz? You was like, damn, okay, I haven't felt. Is there is there anybody that stands out? Yeah, there, I mean, there, there's been a few dudes. Um, you know, that's kind of what has surprised me was like the physicality when I got into the league. Like we three or four games in in my rookie year, and we playing the Lakers and. Dylan Brooks had gotten in some foul trouble and coach was like 40, 40. When he say 40, we picking up full court, just, mm -hmm. you know, token defense. Mm -hmm. I try to crawl up in LeBron, like pick him up. And he just put that forearm on me. And I was like, <laughs> damn, like, I was, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't moving that. I ain't moving through that. But yeah. I mean, him, and then it was really the screens. Like when I first started garden, like, you know, the Damian Lillards and CJ McCollums and like those guys, like when you really try and press up and know you got to get over top of the screen, the big already knows, like I'm coming to crack you. Like <laughs> that, that was the, that was the hardest adjustment for sure. So on those screens, I'm glad you brought that up on those screens, you know, most, you know, that's it. You're taught most get over those screens, get under those screens, yeah. like get yeah. through somehow. Like, yeah. do you feel like you, you're in a situation where you can like, kind of plow yourself through you know i know like, you don't want my, the offensive of charge originally but. going into it that's what i thought like all right i'm gonna just get through this screen you know but now nah, they send them strong screens like obviously <laughs> you, you use your muscle and use your force a little bit to navigate it but you ain't yeah. just going right through it you ain't got going you. right through it yeah got you so e even you even you have to yeah, nah, uh, yeah. You, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't just running through them nah nah so so still, so you talking LeBron. This LeBron is in year 19. So still, yeah. year 19, you mentioned LeBron as being that, yeah. that guy that forearm. He's still an imposing figure physically. Physically, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's, you know, he's taking care of his body, done a good job with, um, you know, staying healthy, staying strong, staying in shape. And, you know, it's paying off for him. Like you say, year 19. Mm. Are you doing anything right now, Des? Like fifteen points, shooting a three phenomenally. Like, are you doing anything right now that you're even surprised about? Uh, I mean, I, I, I I'm not gonna say I expected this because I'm a guy, um, you know, just kind of go with the flow. Um, you know, I put my work in and, you know, live with the result. That's kind of how how I move and and that's my motto. So, um, you know, I didn't know what this year was gonna look like. Obviously, JV left and he was a big scoring low for us. Um, down low, so I knew that we were going to have to make a point somehow, but uh, you know, Jaws obviously taking a step, uh, DeAnthony's taking a step, I've taken a step. Um, you know, it's just it's been a good start to the year for sure. Yeah, your confidence looks sky high, man. And so, let, let, let me ask you this you know, you, you talked about Coach Jenkins, I would have asked you about him, um, momentarily, but I went, you said something before you guys played Utah. You said that you guys had a team meeting. Yeah. What was that like? Can you break break that down to me, please? Like, what prompted that meeting? Who started it? And what were some of the things that were discussed in that? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of driven and set up by the coaches. Um, but ultimately, the players were were the ones that were, you know, doing most of the talking and, um, you know, trying to get on the same page. And that's, that's honestly what it was about, you know, getting on the same page. Um, you know, not necessarily from like an X's and O's standpoint, but from, you know, who we want to be as a team. 
um, you know, because we've, we've beaten, you know, top teams in, in both the East and the Western Conference. But, um, you know, we've had our games where we've come out and, and laid eggs, you know, and our losses we had lost by, you know, I think it was like an average of 20 points or something, um, like excluding a couple losses. So um, just trying to find that consistency and, and figure out what it is, um, you know, it'll help us be that, that team that we want to be. And, uh, you know, I think that the meeting was good for us. Um, we had a good win in Utah, and we're looking to build off of it. Yeah, you had that. Um, you had the last defensive stop right there against Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. So in a, in, a, in a situation like that, I didn't see. I didn't see any help. Like I, I didn't yeah. see any like help. Like so, a situation like that. What What do you say to teammates? Do you say like, just let me go? Like how do, How do you prepare for a stop like that against an All Star that's going to determine if you win or lose? Yeah, I mean it's film. I mean, knowing knowing what he likes to do, what he likes to get to. Um, you know, the whole left side of the floor was clogged. Rudy was standing there. Bogdanovich was in the corner. So he caught the ball and took off running just to space in general. And I knew once he, he got going lateral and wasn't going to the basket, he was, you know, trying to get to his jump shot. So just trying to time that up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, film and just having a, a feel and awareness for the game for sure. What What is what, – you, you talked about Coach Jenkins and him just being a different – different cat what makes him what makes him unique among the other coaches that have coached you I mean like obviously he loves the game um but like you're you're a person before you're a basketball player you know and I've never really uh you know had coaches like that you know once we get in the gym and we get to work it's always about you know work 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 and don't get me wrong with coach Jenkins it's about work but um, you know, he also wants to know, you know, how your family's doing, how are you mentally, like, we'll, we'll get out and go see movies as a team, go, you know, go out to eat, all type of little team bonding stuff, just to get your mind off the game and remember that, you know, you're a human before you're a basketball player. Yeah, for sure. That's perspective, for sure. Yeah. Uh, what What is one thing, what is one, is there is there anything about Ja that people will be surprised to know? I mean, I mean, I don't know if, if you're going to be surprised, but, you know, he's one of the most loyal dudes, um, you know, I've probably ever been around, um, you know, just from his family to his teammates. You know, he, he has all his boys from Murray State that he played with. He still hang out with them all the time. Uh, he don't go nowhere without his, you know, uncles, pops, cousins. Yeah. Um, Uncle Phil, for sure. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They all good people too, man. So he's just a, lo a loyal dude inside and out. So individually for you, I know you're about team success, but I want I want to ask you about individually for you. Like now that you know what you're capable of, uh, wh what do you want to accomplish? Are there uh, like, are there any goals? Are there any like, awards? Or you know, like events I said, you would like man, to? Do? I mean, I'm I'm kind of go with the flow. Um, you know, I'm that guy that puts that work in and at the end of the season, you look up and you get this accolade, you get that accolade. Um, you know, I never want to be like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to be a two time, three time all star. I'm trying to, you know, scoring champ, three point champ. Like I'm, I'm not really that dude. I'm just all about, you know, the process of getting better. No, I mean, we're, we're, we're seeing that. I mean, look, you, you definitely should be. I'm just saying it myself, you know that. What they call it now? It's not the rookie sophomore game. It's the rise of the young, the rising stars yeah. game. You definitely should be in there. So let's put you in there. One of the best 3D players already yeah. out there. Period. So you know, I think you I think you qualify. I think you got <laughs> I think you got good qualifications for that. So before I, before I let you go, real real quick, there's like when you look at this Memphis squad, and I, and I brought up that meeting because. You're a team that now you guys you have expectations. You For know sure. you guys definitely want to be in the in the playoffs. You want to be there. Should be there. Um, do you feel like people going in? Do you guys get motivated by people counting you guys out? Like I, I don't know if Memphis. I don't know for most for the most part if, if people felt Memphis was going to be a real. Uh, a real contending team, but yeah. what what is the what is the makeup of this team? What what is the belief? How far do you guys think you really can go? Because you're still relatively a young squad. For sure, I mean we we don't put no limit on on what we can do. Um, you know, you talked about me and Ja, um, both kind of being overlooked and 
you know, having like a, you know, unconventional path um, to get to the league. And, and we got multiple guys like that. I mean, Dylan Brooks, a three-year guy, hungry. Um, Xavier Tillman, uh, another hungry dude. Um, you know, so we just got guys that have that have been through the war. Um, you know, so we uh, we a hungry group, um, and we got experience in the playoffs last year. Uh, so I mean, I don't want to put any limit on this team. Jazz, you speaking on limits? I, I think uh, I, I may reach my limit. My wife burnt something and got had the house. That was the fire alarm going off, man. <laughs> So, I, I think I better reach my limit. They over, man, yeah. they over here fanning the flames. Man, come on, man. While I'm doing the pod, man, couldn't wait to cook whatever she was cooking and got the. Boy, boy, boy. That was a good answer, though, Dan. So, I'm, I'm going I'm to let you, I'm going to let, let you go with this, man. So, to right, right now, for people who d- don't know, who D bangs, who people who don't know, Tell them about yourself. Like, what what can they expect from you? What type of player, personality? Just go ahead, man. Let it be known. Hungry, competitor. Like, that, that's the two two things that I think anybody that knows me will usually describe me as. You know, I'm a hungry competitor. Um, you know, that puts people before myself. Um, you know, I'm a team first guy. Uh, you know, but don't get it twisted. I'm, you know, about my business for sure. Mm, man, I like it. I like it. I like it, man. I like it. And you said in college you was bench pressed about three sixty. That was that <laughs> yeah. was max. That was yeah. max. Yeah, yeah. It, ain't, it ain't it ain't too many people that's gonna mess with you, bro. <laughs> so you you in good hands, man. But D, yeah. I, I first of all, I, I've been trying to get you on for a minute, man. I think you had a wonderful story, man. I'm proud of the success you're having on the court, man. So I thank you for definitely coming and taking the time to yeah. come on here, man. Thank Wish you nothing but the best. Me, I appreciate no, it. All good. Yeah, we have to do it again. For sure. We can definitely Memphis, do that. For sure. Memphis Grizzlies starting two guard, Desmond Bain. If you don't know who he is, you're going to know, find out soon. This guy is a force offensively and defensively. And just look at him. You don't want to mess with him. So thank you, y'all, <laughs> for checking out the Post Up Chris Haynes, uh, Post Up with Chris Haynes podcast here on Yahoo Sports. Desmond Bain, we thank him. Everybody, happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving. Check y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>